Hello everyone. As you know, running these trail cameras throughout entire season isn't cheap, especially if you roll with these types of batteries. So today I'm going to talk about how I create my battery boxes to get my cameras to go an entire season without having to touch the camera. If you do like these particular videos, please like and please hit that subscribe button. That tells me that these are the type of videos that you want to see going forward. All right, let's get the party started. One of the nice features about this particular cord that I got from Herd360 is that um, it's got this true proof, okay? I know it's kind of hard to tell, and I'll bring it up to the camera as close as I can, but it's got this feels like metal actually and it's a chew proof cord so you know if you got squirrels or raccoons um you know obviously messing with your camera it just gave me that extra peace of mind knowing that they're not going to cut through that cord and essentially cut the the power off to the camera um, you can get other cords online um, they are a little cheaper uh, these cords on herd 360 i believe were 14.95 and then you'll have to also pay for shipping and I think tax as well. Um, so, but these cords here gave me that peace of mind that, you know, a squirrel's not going to chew through this particular cord and that this cord is going to last a long time. The other thing I like about the cord, and I'm not sure if this is just particular or not, um, but this cord really sticks in nice when you put it into the camera. It just catches and it holds really firm. Okay. So I did like that component about it as well one of the really neat features though about purchasing this particular line from herd 360 is that it has this two-sided nut okay so what you do is you just drill a half inch hole into the box okay so it's going to be that fatter right it's going to be that fatter drill bit half inch you then pull this apart install it fairly simple and then what's neat about this is it has rubber grommets inside so if i untwist it i can slide this line through freely if or wherever i like so if i want to keep more line inside the box i can do so and then counter twist this nut and that just locks it in place all right so because it's springy, I can move it because it's springy, but it's not sliding through that rubber grommet. So that's telling me that this is keeping the water out. That's a really, really neat feature. And then what's kind of nice is that uh, from Herd360, they have this heat shrink wrap around there. That's kind of a nice extra feature. And then the thing that kind of confused me was, is when I purchased this cord, these two terminal pieces here, the two female ends came already connected. And I could not slide them through this nut. And that confused me. I'm like, well, why would you even create something like that if I can't get it through here? And then I had to call Mike over at Herd360, and he mentioned to me, just cut those terminal ends off. And in the package, he had extra ones. And then you slide this through. And then after you slide it through, then you connect those extra ones onto your battery. So that was fairly simple. I'll link below where you can purchase uh, all of these um, parts to make your own battery box. So once again, I'll have this for the Tacticam. You will have to look to what particular camera you would like. So if you run different style of cameras, um, whether it's Stealth Cam or Spartan, uh, you will have to purchase the cord, the appropriate cord for this. It's not just a one size fits all cord because the <clears throat> ends on these particular cameras are not all the same. So the Tacticam is different than the Stealth Cam as far as the size hole that you, util that you will utilize. Now let's go over the battery box. So these particular battery boxes I purchased from Harbor Freight for $6.99. I'll put the link down below. Sometimes uh, from what people have mentioned to me is that you can get them on sale for $4.99. Now, I wasn't going to wait for them to go on sale because I had to get these battery boxes completed. Um, but I'll let you know, these are a very, very nice battery box. 
if you whatever you go with battery box wise though one thing you want to make sure is that it has this rubber gasket that goes all the way around right uh, and that's just to keep the water and the moisture out of your battery box because uh, there's a lot of these plastic ammo boxes that don't have that gasket the other nice thing i like about this particular battery box is that it came in this might be kind of hard to tell but olive green color and then on top of that from a security component you can put a lock right here if you would like the python cable does not go through there in case somebody asks but you can run your python cable through the handle okay and then you can take your cable run it through your camera and essentially lock up both camera and box assuming that you have a separate lock here and all should be semi-protected so yeah these battery boxes are really really sweet especially for the money that you pay because a lot of those battery boxes out there you know you're looking at 12 to 20 bucks for you know an average cheap battery box so i really like these a lot they're cheap and you know they do a really really good job as far as being just big enough to get that battery in and obviously as you can tell if you want to get a bigger milliamp battery in there you can do so as well. So I had these styrofoam pieces laying around. They were actually uh, meant for a gun case. So I pulled those out. Uh, it was an old gun case actually. And they have these little slots made in it. So it actually worked out really nice. So I took this, cut it to where I needed it, and then just pushed it along the side of the battery. And then if you look down, I have another smaller piece in front of the battery. And that really keeps that battery in place. So, you know, when you're walking with this particular unit, um, you don't have that battery sloshing around left to right. And then I'm not totally sure, but, you know, if you've got any moisture in here, uh, this foam should help soak up some of that moisture. The other thing that I do uh, to help with moisture in the battery box is I have these silica gel pieces. So every time something would come in the mail, you know, you, you purchase products or whatever, or even vitamins, a lot of them always have these little silica gel pieces that help absorb moisture. So just take one or two, just throw them in the battery box, and it's just a little added protection to help keep that moisture out of the box. over the battery itself so the battery uh, that I have here is the expert power battery um, he's got really great reviews on Amazon uh, I bought the four pack because when you buy them in the four pack you save even more money and I knew I was gonna be making multiple battery boxes I'd have to look back but I think they're about 18 bucks uh, per battery and then once again I'll have that link uh, down below um, I went with the 12 volt uh, 7 amp hour uh, battery and I had all four, when I got all four home, I quick put them on a charger. And all of them charged up like within five seconds. So they were already topped off and that was impressive. Uh, a lot of times when you buy batteries, especially online batteries, um, you know, some of them can be topped off, some of them can take a couple of hours to charge. Uh, so that, uh, that was impressive. So these are the particular batteries here. Now, if you're gonna be going, uh, you know, taking multiple pictures, multiple videos and just running this battery only, meaning you're not going to have internal batteries in your trail camera, uh, I would recommend bumping that 7 amp hour to 12 or maybe even, you know, 14 or 20. Uh, so if you're going to be running this is your only energy source, bump that up. But I will be running an internal source and an external source. Now, some people might ask, well, you know, why would you run both? Isn't your goal to save money? It is. Um, but... A little hint is that when you hook these guys up, all right, the camera reading, the battery reading that you get on your app uh, is going to tell you what the external battery is, okay, and how much juice is in the external battery. And it will always use the external battery first. When, if this battery uses all of its juice, it will then go to the internal batteries that you have in here. 
Now, the only caveat, and, and you know, when I run my, my trail cameras, and I do run them on public land, uh, these cell cams, um, my biggest fear is that a squirrel, um, somebody with bad intentions, takes this cord and pulls it out, okay? And if this is your only battery, all right, this isn't going to work. Now, the good part is, is that the Energizer lithium batteries that I run at my internal batteries, okay, these guys right here, they have a 20-year shelf life. So, with that being said, all right, if this battery doesn't go completely dead, I can just leave these internal batteries in here year after year after year. The other nice thing about lithium batteries is that they don't leak. So, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting that acid all over the inside, just keeping old batteries in there. Now, if you're using alkaline batteries in there, you do have that possibility. Also, the alkaline batteries are subject to cold weather. Here in Wisconsin, um, I use these because, once again, I like them. Uh, they last a long time, 20-year shelf life. And like I said, they're more or less my backup batteries, uh, not the batteries that I'm utilizing. For whatever reason, if that lead-acid battery dies, cord gets pulled, whatever the case may be. So, you're still saving money. Once again, you're still not buying these year after year. You're just utilizing these as a backup internal battery that can stay in this camera for, you know, five, six years. Some people ask me, Clint, why don't you use a solar panel? Now, I do have two of these solar panels that I'll be utilizing this year. Um, but I hunt a lot of public land. And in order to hide these guys well, I like to go into dark, evergreen, forested areas. And I get these trail cameras way, way back. Um, so a lot of the spots that I put these trail cameras in, uh, there's not much sunlight. And I don't know if I totally trust this 100%, okay, than utilizing this particular battery box. Not only that, this solar panel is about 23 to 24 dollars more so if somebody is going to scarf solar panel or the battery box with the battery um you know i kind of rather have them take this it'll save me a little extra money if they steal this over this uh the other thing is is just making mock scrapes over the years um personally i like putting those mock scrapes in those dark forested areas once again hemlocks or spruce uh, bucks tend to, okay, tend to utilize those mock scrapes more in those uh, daylight hours than where if I had them on a field edge, they're having, you know, it's more night time where I would have to use a solar panel. Now, what I like about that is that I catch a buck on the cell cam utilizing those mock scrapes during any type of shooting or daylight hours. Uh, you know, that's telling me ASAP, I need to get out there and get after that particular buck. Uh, so that's the advantage, once again, to having one of these guys in those dark, dense, forested areas where I like to put my mock scrapes. These batteries should get you about five to seven years of use. Same type of battery I utilize in my Vexlar ice fish finder, all right? Uh, you know, so I'm out in the winter time with those batteries and I get about five to seven years out of those if taken care of properly. So once you're done for the season with this battery, all right, you want to put it on a charger and bring that juice all the way back up in that particular battery. And then it's a good idea also to top it off one more time during the off season as well. And that should get you about seven years out of that particular battery. I like to utilize this guy right here. This is a Stanley one amp charger it's a safety charger which will shut off after that battery has been topped off so you don't have to worry about overcharging your battery i'll put the link to where you can find this charger as well and just to give you a heads up uh i have an associate degree in physical therapy i also certified as a personal trainer and i have an associate degree as a chiropractic technician so i'm going to have some videos going forward and we're going to talk about getting that shoulder stronger for bow hunting. We're also going to talk about some back issues that we deal in the outdoor world, whether it be paddling uh, in a canoe and kayak or in bow hunting itself. So if you're looking forward to seeing some of those videos and you've dealt with some shoulder issues for bow hunting, uh, you may also want to like and subscribe as well. 
All right, folks, bow hunting is almost upon us. Get those trail cameras out in the woods if you haven't already. All right, until next time, Clint from Oak and Iron Outdoors. Have a great day. Thank you.